Thank you, Dr. Medra, especially for those thought-provoking questions towards the end. And now, uh, the next speaker, Mr. Kevin Stoller, Director, Indian Institute for Competitiveness, Toronto, Canada. Thank you. Um, I'm also a professor at the University of Toronto, which means there's nothing I like hearing more than my own voice. So, I will actually, since we're actually, I think we are now actually ahead of time, since we're actually close to being on time, so for Indian standards, I know that means we're ahead of time. So I want to make sure I actually can stick to my time. Um, so I was thinking about what I was going to talk about and why I was on this panel. Because I've spent the past kind of decade and a half working on creative economy and talent and skills and how those things really matter, which is the panel this afternoon. Oh, wait, free trade, it's okay. But as part of the work that I've been doing on looking at understanding talent and skill and how that really drives economies, I've done a lot of work in India, which is why I'm working on the Indian um, Institute of Competitors. But I'll talk a little bit more about that because I actually think it fits quite nicely um, in a very interesting framework. Because as I looked at the list of delegates, um, I realized that I am, at least on the list, the sole so uh, the interesting thing, of course, is I'm a US citizen, but I work in Toronto. So, and one of the things that is quite interesting, as the previous speaker had mentioned, um, India and Canada right now are in the process of finalizing a, a free trade agreement. And I, a couple of months ago, was speaking with the chief negotiator from the Canadian side, uh, and I said, so how is it going? Going about free trade agreements drag on and on and on and on. And he said, he said, actually, it's going quite well. Um, I actually expect that we will have announcements to be made by the end of the year. And I thought, oh, really? Uh, but the reason is, uh, we have a government in Canada right now that is very driven towards free trade agreements. We recently have uh, announced one with South Korea. They are later this month uh, announcing a Canada-EU free trade agreement, which many people are looking at as uh, a model of a US uh, free trade agreement. So there's a lot of uh, interest in what's going on with these things in Canada. And so uh, I thought, okay, um, right, there's, there's, this is going to be happening. And I think one of the things that's really interesting uh, is not so much the kind of, I, I mean, the, the idea of the agreement itself is very nice and wonderful and, and does a lot of things, but really thinking about what I'm going to go back to the idea of the Indian super competitiveness and why it exists what we're trying to do um, very much ties back to the fact that this agreement is, is soon to be uh, signed. And, and the, the thing is, the institute itself is actually, the, there is something called the Institute of Competitiveness here in India, which is in, in Delhi, uh, that Dr. Ramit Kapoor, who is a good friend, runs. Um, and he works with Michael Porter and Harvard, the strategy, uh, Institute of Strategy and Competitiveness at Harvard, and also runs the um, Indian Council on Competitiveness, of which I'm on the board. And the whole idea is to understand competitiveness in an Indian context and what's going on. I was like, you know, what really is competitiveness? And in the end, right, it's about being able to succeed in a free market. Um, and so, what are the, you know, kind of what are the things and how do they work and what's going on? And so the, the council, the institute here, um, has been around for several years. I was looking at the states, they hand out, in fact, in a couple of weeks, the Porter Prize is going to be handed out to a series of uh, companies um, in a variety of industries who are all quite successful in being competitive and have been evaluated and judged and determined to be uh, quite successful. Um, they also hand out the Chief Minister Award every year to the most competitive states in India. Um, and, and so they really have a strong understanding of the country and its many components. And so the idea was, hey, um, we have all this kind of great information about India, and, and I said, I've done some work here looking at the um, creative economies and the overall economic development of both the states as well as the cities across India, with a couple of reports that we released. And, and it was like, okay, uh, how do we get this information in, in, to a Canadian context, in a, in a kind of North American, not only in Canada, but a North American context, because one of the things that's really interesting is that if you look at free trade agreements, one of the things that's really interesting that I find absolutely, and the experience, I did, I've seen this in Canada um, and in the US with NAFTA, what you find is that they are in fact national agreements, right? National federal governments come together and they negotiate like crazy and they come up with all kinds of things and they and, and two 
countries actually agree on what this thing is going to be and how it's going to work. But the actual impact of that agreement is actually not national, it's subnational. The way the places where you have impact, the places where things really happen, is actually at the subnational, at the regional level, at the state level, and increasingly at the level of urban areas. Right? Um, we had the presentation earlier this morning on Maharashtra, right? And it was really about the state, the place, including Mumbai, as a place to do business, right? What you're seeing is that, in fact, it really is the metro areas that are driving the economies. It's the metro areas that are the kind of units of decision, right? When people are deciding whether they want to invest, where they want to invest, they look at those areas. That's really where they're making those decisions. And so it becomes important to make sure that you are aware of and understanding what's going on within these regions and how those regions work. Uh, one of the points that I like to make is everybody uh, has always talked about the BRICS and how important the BRICS are in emerging economies and all that stuff. I'm like, yeah, no, that's not right. It's not really the countries, right? You shouldn't be thinking about the BRICS, you should be thinking about the dams. And by the dams, I mean Delhi, and then by Mumbai, and Bangalore. Uh, because that's what matters. It's not, you know, India is 28, okay, now 29 places. Right? There is no India. There, yeah, it exists, but, but really it's a bunch of different places. And so it's important, right, in thinking about these agreements and how they work and what's going on, it's what's happening at that subnational level. It's how those things are, are coming together and how they're plugging in. So the role and the goal of the Indian Institute uh, for Competitiveness, and we're based in Toronto, uh, are, we're really thinking across all of North America, we're focusing on Canada right now. Uh, we have support from the uh, Canada India Foundation, which is a group of Canadians of Indian origin who have all been quite successful across Canada and done a lot of really great things. Um, and are very interested in facilitating the relationship between uh, Indian businesses and Canadian businesses and understanding how to make that work. Um, and so our real key focus has been on how do we, right? In the, in the area of knowing we're going to have a, a free trade agreement, knowing that these things are going to be out there, understanding that what you really need, right, is knowledge about the different places. Right? It's not, again, it's not the one India, it's the 29. Uh, and in fact, it's even the 50 if you, look, if you look at the major cities. So how do you share that information and how do you get that information? Because I can tell you the interesting thing is we're going to have this free trade agreement and most of the businesses in Canada, the ones who could really benefit from it the most, right, are the SMEs, right? The smaller businesses who really, boy, I want to go global, I want to expand, but I don't know where to go. Where in India should I actually be focusing my attention? I can watch the really cool videos online from Maharashtra, and I can watch them from Uttar Pradesh, and I can watch them from West Bengal. What do I do? Do I do I go to Malawi? Where am I supposed to be? What's the best place for my business? What's the best place for me to actually facilitate using this agreement in order to really facilitate and grow my business and help both economies prosper and be successful? Um, and so, really, our role is to help do that. Right? We're looking to say, how do we take what we already have? The Institute uh, for Competitiveness here already has a lot of great information, but how do we get that information in the hands of people who really need it um, to be able to make decisions and to understand what's going on so that they can use it to help kind of better make what the, is the important business decision for them? Um, let me see. I'm checking my notes. I'm actually good. I'm ahead of time and I'm happy. Um, so, so really, I think that's, that's our key thing, right? Is to be able to understand that um, to, to enable, actually enabling these agreements, right, really means talking and dealing with businesses and helping get them the information they need to be successful. Uh, all of that said, it's also worth noting, as I said earlier, the Canada EU agreement is being worked on very much as a model for what's going to happen with the EU US agreement. Uh, I have no doubt in my mind that the uh, India Canada Free Trade Agreement uh, will face a similar fate, um, right? And that at the end of the month, the Prime Minister is meeting with President Obama for two days now. Um, and I'm sure that this will be a topic of discussion because part of what um, has really facilitated and why there was a great deal of interest and why the Chief Negotiator is firmly convinced that there's going to be a Canada India Free Trade Agreement by the end of the year was very much because there's a lot of motivation on both sides that need to happen. 
optimize it. You know, when nobody really wants it, it can drag on forever. But what it thinks actually want to happen, you have a prime minister who really wants to do this in India. You have a prime minister who is about to face an election who really loves free trade agreements in Canada. Uh, that makes it very likely. Uh, and so I think it's important to keep that in mind. So as the sole Canadian delegate here, uh, you know, yes, it's a small country. We're big geographically. We don't have the population, but a huge space and a lot of resources as well. But in fact, I think it's really worth pointing out that this agreement is coming up, and that it's worth keeping your eyes on and understanding because it is going to be a model for other agreements, I think, especially with the US. Uh, that will make a huge difference, I think, in terms of how that gets structured and what happens. I know with the EU agreement right now, the Germans and each other are trying to make some noise because they're unhappy about the way some of the things are working. Um, and so it's interesting to see how that will play out. But I think in this case, the, the India-Canada one, um, very much, I think we will see something happening fairly shortly. And what we will see happening, I think, will set the stage for a much larger, um, and I'm sure much more significant, free trade agreement with the US. So with that, I actually stop. Thank you. Thanks so much, sir. Next speaker, my name is Kavita Ayatlaur, Economist, India Resident Mission, Asian Development Bank.
cross-border infrastructure and related software are necessary to eliminate trade and investment barriers to improve transparency, efficiency, and procedural uniformity. The region also has enormous energy needs, but has not been able to utilize nor tap its energy potential from various sources. It has been estimated that regional trade in energy would yield annual benefits between 12 and 15 billion US dollars. Regional Economic Cooperation and Integration, or RCI, is a process by which national economies of a region become more interconnected. ADB is mandated by its charter to foster regional cooperation amongst member countries. ADB encourages national economies to step up their collaborative efforts under four key pillars. Cross-border infrastructure and related software, elimination of trade and investment barriers, monetary and financial cooperation, and coordinated actions in regional public goods such as clean air and management of natural disasters. The ADB supported South Asia Sub-Regional Economic Cooperation or SASEC program comprises of a subset of SARC countries, namely Bangladesh, Bhutan, India and Nepal, and most recently Maldives and Sri Lanka have been co-opted. It is a very project-focused approach to regional cooperation. In the case of South Asia, a bottom-up phased approach involving support to national projects with regional dimensions support for sub-regional programs such as SASEC, support for regional institutions such as SAAP, and support for inter-regional initiatives such as SAAP, Benstech, has been given. ADB also works with other agencies such as UNSCAP to study and build capacity and promote transport facilitation.